Hi, welcome everyone to the CTSNet Roundtable titled Motherhood in Thoracic Surgery. My name is Blair Marshall and I'm going to be the moderator today. I'm currently a thoracic surgeon at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital and I've been actually a single mom now for about the last 10 years. Currently I have 15 and a half year old twins who are now both at home alone. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm here with three of my esteemed colleagues, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves to you. I'm, yeah, I'm Virginia Lytle. I'm a general thoracic surgeon at Boston University, Boston Medical Center. And I have three children. Um, they are ages 17, 15, and 12. They are not home alone, <laughs> because they get into big trouble when they're alone. <laughs> but uh, th yeah, those are my children. I'm Andrea Wolf. I'm a thoracic surgeon at the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. And I'm the single mother, also for 10 years, of a 10-year-old boy. I'm Mari Antonoff. I'm a thoracic surgeon at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. I am a mother of three children, a 9-year-old daughter and sons who are aged 7 and 15 months. So we all train a lot of students, and I often get questions from medical students about how you manage a career in thoracic surgery and also motherhood. And I thought maybe today we could share some of the stories of doing both, maybe with our community. So um, I prepared a few questions, and I thought maybe we would um, go over why each of us likes being a thoracic surgeon in general. OK, I'll start. Uh, it's the uh, most fulfilling job that I uh, can ever imagine having. Um, it's always challenging um, emotionally, but also intellectually. Um, you, uh, it's humbling, like any surgical practice. Uh, and uh, I think it makes me a better mom. Uh, I think the fact that my children see me working uh, makes them hopefully have ambitions to be to, to work too, <laughs> um, especially my daughter. <laughs> Doesn't always work that way. <laughs> um, so uh, I just can't imagine not working, and I can't imagine having another working in any other profession. Mm -hmm. I think you know, for me, we all like a challenge, and uh, being a thoracic surgeon. Um, always provides you with that challenge, and so if you're one of those mm -hmm. people that that's what you like to do, uh, I think you thrive on it. How about you guys? Um, I like taking care of sick patients and doing complex surgeries, and uh, I think thoracic offers the best opportunity to follow your patients long term and really think about problems as they arise and then deal with them surgically. I, I agree. I, I love so many of the things that were already mentioned about, about why you, you all enjoy being thoracic surgeons. For me, I think the number one reason, the most enjoyable part of my day is the connection with the families, the conversation that I have when I walk out of the operating room and I can tell someone that your family member is safe, we got the entire tumor out, the, the relief and the joy that they feel to be a part of that moment, to be, to be involved in those very special moments in people's lives, it, it's very powerful and it means a lot to me to be able to do that. Yeah, I, I um, often give out my cell phone, especially for patients with critical situations. And, you know, one of the nicest things is at Thanksgiving time when we're with our families, they think of me and they send me a text on Thanksgiving. And I've long <clears throat> stopped seeing maybe the patients or something like that. But, you know, when everybody's sitting around the table saying thanks, they think of sending something. It means a lot. So what do you like about being a mom? Uh, <laughs> like the fact that I'm not. Because there are good things. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. I like the fact that I'm not doing it alone. I can't imagine doing it alone. So I'm very. Uh, I admire you too very much. Absolutely. I just can't imagine doing it without um, my 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 husband, who's very involved. Um, I would like seeing them grow. You know, each stage of their life, there's like uh, they surprise you. Uh, you know, when they're younger, they're pleasant surprises. When they're teenagers, they're not always pleasant surprises. <laughs> but that's another uh, challenging part of, uh, of I don't know, be my career. Because uh, you know, yeah, I'm a career, I'm, I'm, my, being a mom is a career too. Um, <clears throat> but just uh, being together as a family and doing things as a family and uh, also trying to inspire them to, to pursue um, careers where they'll contribute to society. Yeah, I mean, although I may be a single mom, as we say, it takes a village. And so I, I have a support system in a very extended Greek family that's very hands-on. So um, it's not that I do this all by myself. I, I would agree. I, um, my son has a number of medical issues, and there are actually nurses who, who help me and, uh, and are critical to taking care of him. And sometimes it feels like work's at home. Um, but my favorite thing about being a mother is just seeing my son happy. 
and when he laughs and he smiles and he thinks independently and comes up with some joke, I, nothing makes me happier. I agree, and I, I think it changes for the different stages of, of the kids as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm fortunate I have them kind of at multiple different <laughs> stages right now. But for the smaller kids, it's I, I agree, it's the, the sheer delight that they take in, in things that we look past every single day. It really helps you recenter and recognize how incredibly lucky we are when you know when a small child can just get so excited about very simple things. And um, for the older kids, I just think when they remind me of myself but better. And I have so much hope for them because I feel that they you know, they're a part of me, but in some ways I, I know that they have gifts and talents and insights that I don't have and I'm so excited to see what the future holds for them because I feel like it's an extension of what what I can be mm -hmm. through them. Mm -hmm. It, it's so true. I, I think um, it's just an amazing experience just to be able to um, watch children get old. I used to say, um, and my, my sister now has a young baby and it's her first, and um, when I first had twins, you know, when you first have a baby, you're like, oh, this is great. <laughs> and then the, they start crawling, you're like, oh, this is great, can't get any better. And then with every new stage, you just learn so much and enjoy so much, and it's just, uh, as it unveils, it's, it's mm -hmm. fascinating. Yeah, when they, when they start to become adults, like my 17-year-old is in 11th grade, is talking about college, and we have a real, real adult conversation about things. Talks with me, talks with my husband, you know, I'm like, wow, he is so mature. When, when did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So that's another surprise, uh -huh. <laughs> so a pleasant one. Uh -huh. Do you have any surprising stories? Well, I adopted my son, and so biologically, I don't expect him to be a lot like me. But when I see that mirror, I see him uh, kind of using the sense of humor I have or the wording I use and sometimes even the spirit, for the lack of a better word, that I have. It, uh, I love it. It's my favorite part of it. You know, Andrea was my uh, Looking to the Futures mentee. I don't know, maybe a decade ago, I think, just when you adopted I had your just son, taken you him were <laughs> a second year surgery resident, and I was, I've was i been in awe of you ever since. And so, I don't know if you would share your story, but I'm amazed by it, and I think, you know, people which should know. Um, I, was, um, I was the pediatric surgery chief resident at Mass General, and we had a patient on our service with short gut uh, for eight months. and. I just, uh, after a short time of taking care of him, I felt this bond and I realized it was unusual. And it happened during a time in my life when I was going through a divorce and uh, I was questioning kind of my purpose and my enjoyment of work and he basically centered my world and made me realize what I was interested in pursuing in surgery. And it was very clear to me that he was my son. And thanks to uh, many people, uh, particularly the nurses at the Mass General Hospital, who helped, uh, helped me take him home and helped take care of him at home. And it, was, uh, it has been and continues to be quite an adventure daily. Uh, but it, it's been the best thing that ever happened to me. Oh, yeah. And wonderful. thank you for saying that. I remember meeting you and uh, realizing that you were the single mom of twins and feeling uh, that this was doable because you had uh, you were a role model to me in your career thank you thank you <laughs> Mara how about you I think <clears throat> these are such great points about having role models um, we all have role models and uh, I've had so many among the women in thoracic surgery and um, you know <clears throat> one of my mentors through one of the formal programs was Shanda Blackman and you know, she has three children and she is amazing and brilliant, like you all are and, and accomplishes so much. But the mentorship mean, means so much because it, it is a challenging integration of, of work and life, making, making everything work. And I'm experiencing it right now because we're having STS in Houston, which is where I live. So I'm going to meetings and participating to the best of my ability and then going home and um, dealing with things like kids wetting the bed and, um, and dirty diapers and lunches that need to be made. And, and the integration is, isn't always easy, but having mentors and role models who are doing it and seeing all of you do it so well makes me feel like I, I can hopefully do it, maybe not as well at every moment of the, of the day, but um, I think the, the, the collaboration and the network and the opportunity to even just debrief and share our silly stories with one another can be amazing. And so I, I think that's what makes it possible for us to do it, is having one another. Yeah, yeah. I agree. 
Well, may I make a shameless plug for Women in Thoracic Surgery organization <laughs> because uh, I never, I don't really feel like I had any mentors for p being a parent um, mm -hmm. and, in this and, and managing my, and balancing with my career. But uh, Women in Thoracic Surgery, okay, it's okay to talk about it, right? Uh, <laughs> it was an opportunity to meet, like that's how I met Mara and yep. Blair, we just met through, you know, the thoracic world, Andrea. Um, so uh, just meeting all these other terrific women and talking about stories and realizing that uh, you, you can do it um, and also inspire younger women to do it because, you know, they, we always get asked, you know, when's the best time to have children, right? You always get asked that. I can't imagine being a general surgery resident and adopting <laughs> yeah, a child yeah. but by myself. <laughs> but, um, so, but I guess it was okay, right? You, you made it work. So there is no, and it's true. We'll see. <laughs> but it's true. There is no good time to have children, right? You just right. you just do it. I mean, I had my first two when I was a I did a surgical oncology fellowship before I was a CT fellow, and um, I had two during that fellowship, and then I had uh, my third when I was a CT fellow, and then into my first job. So um, you have to have supportive uh, supervisors, you know, chiefs who are going to. Um, uh, allow you to, you know, have your, your family time. Um, I have to say, though, I put a personal restraint and I only took a month off for each child, and, but I was very lucky that I didn't have any medical issues. But I really think that people should be able to have their, their, their three-month, you know, their maternity leave. And we I think we can, should continue to support that and help that, make that possible for all women so they don't feel that pressure to go back to work. And I have to say, for me, you know, um, no one gives you really any training to be a mom. And so I had twins at once. And um, <laughs> it was so nice to go back to work where you knew what you were doing. People listened to you. you right, know. right. It was almost better to be at work. It was sometimes. easier. Yeah. Yeah. It, it can be, you know, yeah. right. easier. Having had my first two um, as a general surgery resident, I remember trying to chat with other new moms who I knew that were, were not surgeons, um, and they would talk about how sleep deprived they were and how hard it was, and I remember thinking, you know, this, the kid sleeps for like two hours at a time, it's better than, than most call nights, and it just, it's, it's interesting how almost I felt like being a general surgery resident prepared me for motherhood, not for all of it, yeah. but for some of the sleep deprivation and the lack of control of certain, certain aspects, mm -hmm. you could kind of take with a grain of salt, and also, I, I'm also very good at getting, uh, outfits and diapers and from blowouts out from a child without without soiling anything because I learned that from the nurses in the ICU. So, great skill set that's totally transferable. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for joining us today and uh, I think that concludes our roundtable. Thank you. Sure. Thanks.